Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Are you blessing him? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another moment. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. the Lord for the spirit of wisdom and understanding please lift your voice grant understanding oh God grant understanding in the name of Jesus us understanding grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, we ask you again for understanding in the name of Jesus. Let our hearts be receptive to your word and let it transform our lives and let the proof be at work in our lives and through our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to be back home. I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity again. It was a great time in God's presence. I want us to pray tonight. And um, tonight's teaching is a call. You know. Tonight made me understand again the power of being in the spirit and truly 
what can happen to a man when you are genuinely connected to the flow of what God is doing. Praise the Lord. Yes. As I came up here and heard Pastor Alpha teaching and then so tonight's teaching is a call if you are not great and you have not seen anything in God you may not need tonight's teaching tonight's teaching is for people who have seen the hand of God tonight's teaching is for people who have committed themselves to press into the things of the spirit and, um, doesn't mean that if you're just starting out the teaching for you but this is God speaking to the matured ones tonight in the name of Jesus Christ come up hither part one come up hither part one unto him who sits on the throne blessing and honor To Jesus, the Lamb that was slain, glory and power. Glory and power. Unto him who sits on the throne, blessings and honor. Glory and power Glory and power Forever and ever Forever and ever And ever you reign Forever and ever you reign Forever
Please be seated if you can and then be sensitive. Hallelujah. Please be sensitive. Especially for those of us who came from far, you didn't come to waste your time. See, let me tell you something about a call and a ministry. Listen, listen. See, when God calls a man, the anointing 
is not the only thing that is given you have to understand this every ministry has many standard spiritual features when god calls a man please listen there is an anointing that is upon that man by reason of his knowledge and his personal press into the things of god there is the anointing that is on the office that that man occupies spiritually there is the anointing that is on that man by reason of discerning and being part of the current move of God. they are not the same are we together and then there is the anointing that comes by reason of the dimensions that God wants to take people into based on the truths that are revealed and then at certain levels depending on the call and what office there are covenants please listen that means a vow that God made with that man that as far as it relates to this assignment I have bound myself to do certain things that has nothing to do with even the vessel you see that then there are angelic manifestations listen now there are angels that work with believers there are angelic presence please listen as a believer he said his angels she shall put his angels charge over you there are angelic presence that work with believers but there are angels that don't follow a man they follow anointings they don't need to know who that individual is it's an office the same way they give you an office and there are cars there are pas they don't have to know you it is part of the equipping of the kingdom you see that it's very important and then there are also angelic presence that signify revelations it is not only the anointing that gives revelation the revelation of Jesus Christ which he gave unto John his servant he said he sent it and signified it by his angel hallelujah so when you're in a meeting like this and you see things like this happen it's an interplay of many things it's not just a generic move of an anointing from an anointed man there are things happening that have nothing to do with the vessel himself there are things that are as a result of the health of the secret place of the vessel there are certain things that are based on the office that is being played I just wanted you to learn and to know this because many times believers just wonder look let me tell you this let me tell you this you see these things God is blessing it's not just that God is proving that a man is anointed some of these people fall in many things are happening at the same time there are deliverances there are impartations there are the, the opening spiritual vistas it's like a veil just being open to move men into dimensions this is how people grow this is how people grow it is not my desire to carry some of these graces and these possibilities and just have people watch it uh -uh when god sends a word to jacob it is because of israel that you will also be able to carry these dimensions you see transformation is difficult when there is no reference so god finds a man that represents a possibility and then your spirit and your mind is able to comprehend that dimension as true and possible then you can release your faith and step into it koinonia we call it 
is it all right if you pray for one minute and just ask the lord you say lord all the graces all the revelations pastor alpha let us know you don't have to stand just pray please pray with desperation and hunger hallelujah praise the lord please be seated revelations 4 tonight will be a mighty time it will be brief so that we'll pray we pray for grace we pray for strength revelations chapter 4 this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will show thee things which must be thereafter come up hither and i will show thee things which must not may be certainty things which must be thereafter jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 jeremiah 33 and verse 3 how can I see by myself unless you take over I'll never know it on my own unless you take over take over Jesus take over take over Jesus take over how can I see it by myself unless you take over I will not hear it on my own unless you take over take over you cannot learn it on your own unless it takes over you'll never see by yourself unless it takes over listen there are dimensions you can never see by willpower and study it is given like an initiation until your eyes are open you will never see it he said call on to me and i will answer i will be the one to show you if i don't show you you cannot see it you can study you can pray you can fast but for seeing you may have eyes but you can never see it there are realms that are shown 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 it's called fellowship with the mystery you are brought into oneness with truths and revelations we'll never know it by ourselves unless it takes over we cannot know it by ourselves I'll never hear you on my own unless you take over take over Jesus take over take over take over please sit down tonight 
is a call to press higher tonight is a call to shake us away and out of spiritual complacency tonight is a call to show us that there is more that regardless of that which we have seen there is more that's why i said if you have not done anything serious in the spirit this message may not be for you this message is for someone who has healed before is for someone who has prophesied before is for someone who is at the cutting edge of the move of god is for someone who has tasted and seen the power and the glory of god tonight's message is for someone who knows what it means to be used by god tonight's message is someone is for someone who knows what it means to have the anointing not guessing come up here he said come up here to a higher realm of prophecy to a higher realm of teaching to a higher realm of visions to a higher realm of spiritual power i'm a student of revivals god has granted me the privilege to study the moves of god please listen and i have studied revivals I've listened to a few senior colleagues and fathers in the ministry talk about revivals either based on their experiences or what they were told please listen carefully and I learned this from a man of God that the current move of God always fights the next move of God that the enemy of the next move of God is the current move because many times listen carefully every move of God comes with a level of outstanding results every move of God comes with a performance in a higher dimension and usually because of the the consistency that will come with that move over a period of time it is easy for those who have mastered the strategy that makes them relevant within that move to plateau in the spirit and not believe that there can be more again now listen very carefully when the healing ministry started listen carefully great men like alexander the way and these generals of god they moved in very strange dimensions but then a time came when the healing ministry seemed to just plateau because it looked like men had gotten to the zenith of what they believed that God could do. When the prophetic came, people rose to certain levels and it looked like those who were the highest manifestors of those gifts just stood at a realm. This is not backsliding. This is that you have exhausted every possibility that is within the jurisdiction of that move. There is nothing you can do as far as that dimension is concerned. You have exhausted it. At that level, you will need Revelations chapter 4. A time will come when you will find out that every dimension you need to see as written to, for you by God within a level you have exhausted it you've read it you've preached it you've done everything and let me tell you this listen very carefully I say it with all humility but I have seen you, you see when you start walking with God because of the extent of the downpour listen carefully of visions of revelations you are being open to new things and then especially if you have the privilege of what i call pioneer status that means that you are the among the few to introduce that dimension to a territory because of the scarceness of that revelation there will be a lot to do i mean you are so full of revelation you can preach back to back and there are messages but a time will come when the people within that territory all come into that experience 
they are baptized into it now listen very carefully remember when you were introducing it because very few people knew about that dimension there was hunger and the hunger will always draw you anything you say there will be an applause for it because very few people could enter that dimension but with time everybody will continue to press as you guide them listen carefully you will get to a point where the least has entered like the ark of noah at that point now you will find out that together the goal for that season has been met because god now used you and showed you a dimension and so for three or four years sometimes you will not even need to study anything new you are so full so full you it's like it's a, it's like an animal that has just given birth and wanting the children to suck when that happens let me tell you what happens usually because of the joy the beauty the honor the applause that comes by reason of your being used by God to produce certain dimensions you may fall into the deception that the zenith of what you communicate is all that there can be and so what you will continue doing is recycling the same thing recycling the same thing recycling the same thing to mean that this realm that I've stayed is all there can be in God revelation starts with John the beloved do you know who John was John was not just an apostle he was called the beloved that means if you arrange all the disciples according to their permit me to use the word according to their spiritual stratification the first will not be Peter the first will be John the beloved there abided these three faith Peter hope James love John the greatest you see that now and John was banished in an isle called Patmos for the sake of the testimony of Jesus Christ and while he was there he said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day that, that's another discussion there because there are things you cannot see he said flesh and blood has not revealed this there are levels in the spirit where until you rise in the spirit you cannot see you cannot know so it says i was in the spirit on the lord's day and i heard first started with his hearing i heard this and that and that and then eventually he saw the church the lamb stands and then he received the dimension of revelation to the seven churches that were in asia minor prophetically the catholic church the complete church because every one of those churches represented a dimension in the body that god was adjusting commending and correcting are we together having exhausted that then he was open to another dimension of worship in heaven are we together and to think that that was all john was being told by this revelation that john at this plane that you stand now there is nothing to see again everything has been seen and every instruction has been received notice john was never shown things that will happen from that plane he only saw things that were and things that are that was it then chapter 4 comes and he says come up hither and let's go to the future let me show you the things that must happen shortly and john rolls to the future there are realms that when you stand there you will see what has happened and what is happening but you may never see what god is up to you can be a christian you can still be called i learned very early in life and in ministry that as wonderful as fame is it can be dangerous that as wonderful as revelation and leadership is let me tell you this if you ever assume a pioneer status in the spirit you have to be extra careful pioneers are usually the ones who hardly finish read the bible there are few pioneers that finished 
Moses leads the people and never gets into the promised land himself. Are you seeing that now? It's very important. It's easy to follow a move that was not introduced by you. It's easy to follow on. Yours is just to observe and plate and to conform to it by the Spirit. The nation of Israel did not have to climb the mountain to experience God. They just needed to look at the face of the one who already went. What was in the mountain was now on the face of a man. So instead of climbing up the mountain, they just kept looking at Moses and they would have the same experience. But it was up to Moses to know the next thing that God would be doing. Are we together now? Powerful as Moses was, you can see the extent of his trial and error. They will wait behind and wait for him to go and fish out the new move. Then all of them will come and follow. It was because of this Moses was instructed to speak to the rock. And in anger he struck the rock. And because of that he said, no, 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 no. no. This was not my program. You've corrupted it. You cannot enter Canaan. Pioneering the move of God is very dangerous. Many people like the honor that follows this and that to say, oh, we are the ones that started this dimension. But you see, the thing about it is that because you are at that level, you will feel indebted to that level. You will be emotionally connected to that move. You cannot leave it to the next level. Are we together now? Yes. That you were the first to be, to open up a dimension of God to a territory. It's like you are the first to start producing this and now when you are aware that this is no longer in use if everybody leaves it you will not want to leave it too because of that relationship that's how it is even with spiritual things there are dimensions that you can be so emotionally connected to because of the experiences that surround that dimension and when another move of God starts coming you will prefer that the move comes to meet you there but not to leave that level and to rise higher that's why i said it is dangerous to pioneer spiritual things it's a noble cause and it's a noble task but the burden on it it will only take the spirit of the living god to help you the second reason why it is dangerous or by dangerous i don't mean it is not advantageous that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that you are in a very vulnerable position the second is that because of the charisma and the ego are we together and the sense of achievement that surrounds that level the moment you and any other move that is happening within that dispensation that you don't seem to be involved in you can preach that it is error or it is satanic or it is demonic because you are used to being the starter you are not used to following you are used to starting moves understand what i'm saying you know you see that if you have not done anything in god tonight's teaching may not really bless you john was the first of his kind to introduce this dimension of the prophetic a very strange prophet the bible says of all the prophets none was as great as john so john is in the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey a strange dimension of revelation when jesus comes john baptizes jesus and then he's happy that he's baptized jesus even john said i may decrease i'm not sure he understood what he was saying now eventually the disciples of john had to start living to join something that was a move john was never in one of jesus's crusades they didn't hang him the next day they didn't lock him the next day john was alive he was there he never saw the need because he believed that the the emotional connect and the ego of pioneering things did not allow him to go there notice all the people that seem to be pioneers were those who were offended with jesus the scribes and the pharisees we are the sanhedrin council what are you doing jesus 
all the followers were excited what is the new thing let us join if it's bread we eat if it's the mountain we climb but the scribe said not so this is not how we have been doing it including john follow me very carefully so john is hearing of the things jesus is doing and a few disciples who are loyal to him too come back look at the pain in john's heart the people he had raised i don't know what john thought he would become but his honor was already there for his assignment completed but john probably believed that he would continue to run that ministry the same way jesus was running it to like a parallel whatever it is and it seemed as though jesus did not have regard for john because we never see jesus making any mention of john go and greet john or oh john just to tell you your boy is still here the move continues and the fame of jesus is growing john is threatened the scribes are threatened the roman government threatened everything every day was an episode of mighty things listen very carefully follow me i want to show you something powerful hmm. one day john gets himself in trouble and he's behind bars about to be beheaded and he sends in offense listen this is the current move fighting the next move go and confirm are you the one that we should be waiting for are you the messiah or is there another it was a sarcastic statement it was not a question that required an answer john was not ignorant he was a prophet and when jesus had it jesus said i know what the problem is it's a weakness in men it's a weakness in pioneers it's a weakness in those who are trusted to pioneer certain moves listen what i'm teaching you is very deep you will listen to one message some years to come and you will cry when god sent you to a region where they do not know one tenth of the truths that god has taught you and for many years you become a celebrity and a mighty man and god begins to do mighty things in and through you and then one day you will hear and see of things that you were not involved with and you will see. this is the challenge oh, let me not go ahead of myself this is one of the major challenges with all due respect of fathers and senior colleagues in ministry because of the mighty things that God did in and through them and the dimensions that were introduced sincerely speaking not out of wickedness or whatever they were so emotionally connected to starting things that they believe that if God is ever to do anything it is impossible for them to not start it so when they hear that mighty things are happening and they don't seem to be involved they think it to their honor whereas john was not there when jesus commended him as the greatest prophet in other words as far as this move is concerned receive your crown. you have done a great job but let the program of god continue and if you are interested you will have to humble yourself and join that move provided you are not pioneering it I will show you those who got it right in the bible one of them was mary no woman as a virgin had ever gotten pregnant it was a new dimension now mary had a right to sit down and say my son jesus my this my that but when she discerned there was a new move she followed them to the upper room and waited quietly the mother of jesus among the 120 who would receive the holy ghost was it not the before some of them were born she had been relating with the holy ghost it was the holy ghost that got her pregnant and now she's coming to receive him in another dimension with humility you understand what i will teach you you will never miss any move of god if you don't get it there are moves that will leave you you will stand in shock it's not backsliding you will just say lord when did this cloud pass me Mary got it right. John did not. 
John was offended I will show you that even Jesus got it right he knew that purpose was not just to come and remain on earth he knew the timing and even in advance he began to tell them I am not afraid of handing over because it is in handing over that my honor is multiplied listen so Jesus is preparing the people watch this and then he uses a very dangerous statement it is expedient that I go ah. they said no you must remain here you will be king we eat bread we like you remain we like this kind of ministry but he was saying no 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 I'm even coming to I'm a bridge between the old and the new you must be so desperate for God that the position you occupy in the things of God should not matter you must be so desperate for the things of God like Mary you can give birth to Jesus and still join to wait she was not the one leading praise and worship in the upper room if Mary comes and sits in Koinonia now I will give her the mic I will just give her and sit down what does it like to carry the word of God bodily for nine months Mary talk to us let's learn I will hand over the ministry to Mary there was no mention of her speaking imagine Mary was there among the 120 so Peter is praying remember Jesus told us that in 10 more days the Holy Ghost will come and Mary is watching them you know the level of humility it takes to be a mighty mover in a dimension sustain the humility to stand back there is an obsession in men to be known there is an obsession in men to be famous it's a weakness in men please listen back to our story so John is offended and makes a sarcastic statement go and ask Jesus whether he's the Messiah the same said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world now said go and verify jesus we are not sure again do you know what that message would have done to the disciples they would have said if prophet john is now doubting jesus it means we have to be careful it was a sarcastic way of saying be careful with that meeting be careful with that move so when jesus had it he laughed he said go and the blind see this and that and the gospel is preached he said blessed is he that is not offended in me then the disciples were now at the center stage and one day listen carefully they heard that there were other people who were not part of their camp there was there were some powerful miracles happening somewhere and the disciples said Jesus what is going on here and Jesus laughed he said you guys want to make the mistake of John whoever is not against us whoever is not against us is for us they were so happy there was a time the, the remember the mother of James and John she wanted to come and see him the disciples stopped and said what is it we're in a move we're enjoying you see why they were angry when Jesus said he was going they said well, what is all this one now so what is our own take on this you have created trouble for us and now you want to leave you are not going anywhere and jesus said no it is expedient that i go i'm going because you will now be on the center stage with the holy spirit and they refused jesus was secured enough to finish his assignment and to step back to say spirit of the living god these are the ones that represent the next move use them mightily I will still be glorified I'm digressing to make this statement so that you will understand I have seen a lot of people who started great things in the body and today they are not benefactors of the next move because their attachment and their ego will not give them the flexibility to blend into what God was doing and so because they are they are being inert in the next move of God will have to require an explanation 
so they will fabricate an explanation that communicates error and they'll say forget about those people that's one of the reasons why so many people have insulted the prophetic today i know that the prophetic has its own errors i know if the prophetic has its own imbalances but many people because the dealings of god at that time did not open up to this dimension there are people for instance who will see what just happened here and say no way god does not move like this this is nonsense just because god did not move the way he was moving before does not mean he's not the one moving the flexibility to discern the next move of god and that if you are interested you open up your heart and say lord i must not pioneer that move to join what you are doing if it is god and it brings glory to you i'm on my way going it's a very difficult thing difficult thing if you are a follower it's okay but if you are one who moves why will you see mary among the 120 sitting quietly i have looked for certain names who were once great names in the body in as much as the move of the spirit within their time was there and those names are almost silent and there has been no interest to find out what else is god doing and sometimes they have begun to teach that look anything that is outside the scope of what we know is nonsense that is a dangerous thing that is the mistake of john john would have followed jesus quietly and he would have died honorably there would have been no reason for being beheaded in every crusade jesus would have given him honor even the scribes were given honor as terrible where they never sat outside they sat inside they hated him but at least they followed they followed nicodemus came one day and said jesus let me tell you we are not stupid we know we know we see what you are doing we see the formation of a new move we know that you are a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him except god be with him i'm taking our time to establish this before we begin to build i just felt it strongly in my spirit to tell us do you know why i'm saying this zaria hear me you are a privileged place this is a place that god has put his hand very strongly and many people from here listen god is distributing people from this city across several places and you see when you get to some of those regions you will be surprised that as cheap as some of these revelations we trivialize are you will find out that some of those regions are in utter scarcity and you will be so relevant within a period and if you do not sustain the discernment to know what next when people come into that dimension and you don't know how to come up hither you will be in big trouble you will become the biggest enemy to the next move of god alexander the way was a mighty mighty healing evangelist listen carefully he created what we call zion the zion city are we together now when you know then they didn't have internet and communication was not strong so you couldn't know what was happening in, in another part of the world the way was doing a mighty mighty work until a strange woman later appeared called maria woodward eater listen when maria woodward eater appeared she introduced a dimension of the move of god that they call presence evangelism that was when people would fall down like this and literally freeze in the same position for hours having heavenly encounters and she was a woman until then the way was not aware that something was happening at the other side of the world the day alexander the way heard it history has it this is confirmed alexander the way told everybody that this woman number one as a woman number two this dimension was occultism and he used his influence to fight that woman
her first husband joined that conviction and fought her till he died the current move of god usually will be the biggest challenge to the next move of god the same way the law was the biggest challenge to the grace of god remember that the sanhedrin council started by the impartation of the spirit of moses upon 70 elders that's how it started eventually it had now become a religious place and when jesus came they could not even identify him so john had exhausted all his revelation within a dimension he had seen had john returned back john would never believe that there were higher dimensions but then the angel told him come up hither please prophesy to somebody say come up hither come up hither and i will show you the things that must happen I call what I just explained to you the tragedy of complacency that comes with a successful move of God. It is a complacency. It is, it is, it is weaved in men. It is a weakness in men. That when, when you are successful in executing God's desire for a season, usually the impetus to inquire lord can there be more will not be there because there are obvious evidences nobody can come and say you are not anointed nobody can say you are not intelligent the records are there to show that you are anointed the records are there to show you have built a great church the records are there to show you are mighty let me give you an instance in nigeria today the pattern of church growth is that there usually will be a central church like a headquarters is that true and then you will now have branches all together connected do you know that was not how it was before there was a move of god that brought that formation do you know what the next move is because many young people in our generation now every dimension you climb has the strategy for the move of god i'm not saying that is wrong you understand what i'm saying so the way god revealed to our fathers most of them you will find out that there is a central headquarters is that true that coordinates everything then there are branches around the world it was never like that in the history of nigeria in fact before that time the strategy was to have a small church and be dangerously anointed and just hide there like a seer and your job is to part and release people that was the strategy men like apostle babalola it was after his death that csc expanded like that the, the apostolic church and, and all of that when you read about them most of the great pioneers of the churches we have today especially around the west when they were the way they were they were small look at redeem for instance the founder they had not received the blueprint of establishment and expansion like that our fathers stayed with god and god said for this move that i am bringing this is the strategy I am revealing. Are you seeing that now? But as wonderful as that is, it can be dangerous for someone in our generation to just mechanically begin to envisage. Because in the next 20 years, technology has taught us that you must be at the cutting edge of evolution. The same way it is scientifically, that's the same way it is spiritually so if in our generation your dream is to have branches in every state you are already at the verge of missing something serious because that is not the pattern that will come we must be able to stay and say lord what is the pattern as at the time that move started there was no internet to agree so the advantage of connectivity was not there do you know what the move of god will be now that internet is an advantage that a man can sit in his room and be talking to the whole world it's dangerous to be where god was it's dangerous to be where god was he said holy holy is the lord god almighty who was who is and who is to come 
it's a dangerous thing to be where God was. It's a dangerous thing to be involved in what God was doing. You have to posture yourself to be relevant in what God is doing and what he's about to do. Your current level, at your current spiritual level, you can only see what God is doing. That's the limit. If you want to see the future, you must come up here. From Revelations 1 to 3, there was nothing futuristic. It was a revelation of things that were and the things that are. The moment he wanted to see the next program of God, he was asked to rise to a higher dimension. If you're with me, say amen. So we must trust God for grace to conquer what I call the tragedy of complacency. Please be careful. When you are the greatest of your kind within a territory, pray more fast more because the rest are waiting for you to move and if you don't move just like you they will stay and can i tell you something usually when the move of god comes all the followers are just faster because there is no embarrassment like the disciples of john it is usually you you see which is also another reason why listen men of god we must teach as though there is more in god it is dangerous you are teaching doctrines doctrines will not change they are exact spiritual precepts given to the saints but when you are studying the life the character of god you must create a lot of flexibility and i'm the position of a student even before your members so that there is no embarrassment if and when you have to adjust to the things that god is doing if you're with me say amen An arrival mentality is a dangerous mentality for a Christian, for a man of God. An arrival mentality. I've seen miracles. I've seen signs. I've seen wonders. I've seen the move of God. But could, that, could, could it be that there's more in God than you've not seen? Now, I'm going to make a very serious statement. I want you to listen mention names is a father of faith that has gone to be with the lord a respected voice in the body a great well, i call him great grandfather now papa e hagin when you read hagin's books and you see a lot of things that hagin wrote you will know that hagin was absolutely at the cutting edge of what god was doing at his time but when you read Papa Hagin's books with the lens of what God is doing now, you will find a lot of gaps and the need for improvement. Which is proof he succeeded. It's not proof that he's weak. It's proof that he succeeded. He left us a template, a ladder to build upon. It was Papa Hagin that wrote things like, the anointing of the spirit, the only medium that the anointing can move upon is a prayer cloth. And he's right because he saw it in the Bible. But now we know that that is not absolutely true. It was a dimension of truth that was seen based on him. The anointing of the spirit is as limitless as God himself. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's very important. Let me tell you this. I have seen visions of the coming move of God. And I have been stretched myself. Because of the dimension of the things that will happen those dimensions will be fought tooth and nail when i say tooth and nail there are dimensions that even as a strong believer you will need grace from god you will need to look well from the lens of scripture is the reason why god is grounding us on the word now so that when that dimension comes the your dexterity in the word will make you be Listen to what I'm telling you. There are things we have not yet seen on earth that must happen before Christ comes. The Bible records it. There are dimensions we have only spoken about. The prophet said it. If as I'm standing here right now, you just see this mic. 
on the table and i'm out i'm gone by this night an internet is going to say finally exposed the voodoo power even from this example some of you are already afraid for me apostle don't do it oh you see let me tell you this yet we read in the bible that the spirit took philip and told him to join the chariot of a man not in a vision a man dematerialized entered the realm of the spirit reformed back and stayed on a chariot and the eunuch was afraid he didn't run away he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this he told nathaniel that you will see heavens opened and the angels ascending and descending upon the son of man let me tell you this the miracles that have stretched us now and the dimensions of the power and the word of god will be child's play compared to the things that god has because the pride of men and this cosmos there must be the introduction of something so divine and powerful to bring the kings to their knees this current level cannot bring the kings to their knees again you can what you call now the move of god go to dubai go to singapore go to the u.s and challenge them they will look at you and say stupid this is what you came to tell me let me tell you the truth we are not going to win the world just by charity i believe in charity don't get me wrong but right now the church is beginning to be so afraid they don't have any other superior result so they just have to blend to feed the poor so that that's the only condition to be accredited by non-christian organizations that the, the world's interpretation of the church's relevance is feeding the poor and hungry and i don't have a problem with it but they are reducing us so everybody's now saying look it looks like the court the in thing now if you don't want to be criticized quietly find orphans or find widows buy sewing machine and color or something just share and snap and the world will say well done this is what you the colder you are the more the world says well done we are now seeing what you are doing there are tv programs today that will not air koinonia like this with what happened no way no way with the move of god like this someone shouting <clears throat> You are creating controversy that will make the regulatory agencies get into trouble. Like I said, if you're a new believer tonight, you will need extra grace from God. That's why I, I pre-warned you already ahead of time. We need something more than what we have now to bring the arrogance of the kings of the earth. Let me tell you, they have prosperity they have health do you know that most of what we claim the power of god does we don't even have it well mention three or four things the only thing that the church now in as much as we know can boast of one salvation two the personal communion of the holy spirit three the peace that surpasses all understanding but as far as anything earthly is concerned and the things i just mentioned are the things we don't emphasize most of the things we emphasize are the things we cannot defend so we talk a lot about the miraculous and while we are making all that noise someone in dubai has discovered a way of just making what we will do as a miracle cheap and they will soon make it easy and if that happens we're going to be in trouble because a day will come on a crusade ground just sharing a fence will be a free medical outreach with sophisticated machines and those who are not healed in our meetings will just enter there quickly and in five minutes they are giving when that happens i'm not being sarcastic when that happens let me tell you something will go wrong because one day the government can shut down a church and say we have examined and we cannot see your relevance The church is more than a charity organization it is our fear and our inability to rise higher we have a, remember there was a time where the healing ministry the prophetic and all these things was cast on earth the world had not caught up with that dimension so if you had it you could shine but not now 
not now put a poster and put a wheelchair up nobody could dare question a miracle before but right now someone will come in that crusade ground you will think he came to be blessed he's videotaping everything from your face to the person on the wheelchair they will go and examine the person and say was that leg going to work anyway or was it your prayer that made it work if i have malaria and i've started taking anti-malaria and i'm on day four and you pray for me was i going to be healed anyway or was it the prayer that brought it this is the judgmental spirit that our generation has in the days of our fathers nobody will ask that question it will be on paper mighty things are happening and a crowd now mighty things draw criticism our generation let me tell you this ask some of our parents who are here there were many things that they knew that was not the best but they had an unflinching loyalty for the voices in their time nobody would dare stand up and question a man of god if they were not satisfied they would leave him and go home and pray for him remember that talk of pray for him right now a man can be preaching and a young man can stand up and say sir what you are saying no and create a debate there welcome to a new level of living where if we don't get the strategy for now we will be in trouble are we together thank god for prosperity but of the forbes hundred richest people i'm not sure there are up to 10 of them who are tongue systems so using physical wealth to bring the world to his knees is almost a failed project because there are some of these people who have given 95 percent of their wealth i'm not aware of any believer who has done that now i may be wrong but i'm not aware it means he must take something more than money if it's education the best institutes in the whole world are not christian institutes my brothers and my sisters let me tell you whether it's research whether it's medicine whether it's whatever we have to be honest if it's in the term in terms of well-meaning of civilization and all of that go to hedonistic nation that have no for god and look at level of development infrastructure you look at all of these things many of them are already the future of africa in the next 30 years now what then will bring the kings of today's world to their knees when moses went with a rod to meet pharaoh pharaoh said nonsense you left the wilderness to come and show me a rod to become a snake i am pharaoh you show me more we can sing songs and fall down in the church congratulations but let me tell you we need to take something out that can bring the kings to their knees in babylon babylon was a place of wizardry there was something that happened with daniel there was something that happened with shadrach meshach and abednego that made the king to testify the king passed a decree unanimously that nobody should bow to any other god again except the god of shadrach meshach and abednego are we blessed we must receive grace to not ever believe that what we have seen is all there is we must obtain grace please hear me if you history here thank god for the wonderful things but you must obtain grace the second point on what i want to talk about tonight i'm just charging your mind the first I, I put it as the tragedy of complacency and arrival mentality the second is a condition that must be needed and met in a life if you will ever attract the hand of god that will take you to a higher dimension is called hunger and thirst It's not enough to be ready to move to another level. Hunger and thirst are accurate measures of your spiritual health. The same way when a patient is sick, 
one of the symptoms in most cases is that you lose appetite when you lose appetite spiritually something is wrong matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 says blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness it says that they will be filled hunger and thirst john chapter 7 and verse 37 let's read it very quickly boy my time is gone john 7 and verse 37 look up please in the last day the great day of the feast jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink if you do not thirst you can stay with what i've given with all the days but in this new day i have been visiting you but on this last day if you are still thirsty come listen listen and understand what he's saying remember that it was not the first day the last day they had benefited from all the other days but in the last day he said if any man thirst let him come you have enjoyed the move of god before you have seen the hand of god before you have seen the grace of god before you have seen the sick healed before and god is saying in 2019 if there is any man that still thirst come if there is any church that is still thirsty come Koinonia, if you still believe there is more and you desire, come. That means if you are not thirsty, you can go. It's all right. If any man thirst, let him come. Hunger and thirst, powerful. Without hunger and thirst, there is no appetite and there is no desire for more of God. This teaching, you hear me tell you tonight, if you don't hunger after it will not make sense you want to listen to something else this is a teaching for people who know that there can be more this is a teaching for many people who know that lord I've seen you or oh, i've seen you do a lot of things but i know that there is more in you there is more in you this was the mistake of lucifer lucifer saw a dimension of god he was the custodian the librarian of heaven and by the strength of everything he saw, he believed he had exhausted all there was in God. And then he wanted to rise to run a parallel government with God. And there was judgment in heaven. And he was brought to his knees. That was why when God was recreating man, it surprised him. Because he didn't know that those possibilities were there. They were not captured in the truths that were given to him. Reproduction multiplication through reproduction had never happened it was creation now that a man one man can meet with his wife and have a child that will own ah said something is wrong and so the angels came to meet with the daughters of men to use that strategy to create something else hunger and thirst one of my prayers a man of god every time i said lord please you know i've shared it with you here lord do not show me the extent of my impact it's my prayer and i'm saying it even as i'm preaching here just give me a token let me just see a bit of what you are using me to do and i'm grateful and i'm satisfied let me tell you if you think fame cannot influence you think again was it not the same alexander the way that went to a tailor went to a fashion designer to sew just mantle with the cap that kind of prophet chef cap he sewed everything and tied his ghetto behold elijah he read the bible and said this man is me now what is this what have, what has he done that i'm not doing they first started saying you are Elijah. They said, no, no, all glory be to the Lord. But the time came, they said you are Elijah. It's true. There are things you will not believe now. Keep rising. Tomorrow they will say it and you will believe it. How do you think people become Jesus? I don't mean image of Jesus, likeness of Jesus. Some gentlemen came here one time from Kano. Remember those, that, those Jesus guys and the apostles? Now I say, I don't know if they are here. But they came, some gentlemen, immediately after service. And one of them came for altar call 
as soon as they were done i just saw the gentleman he said he's was it judas one was judas one was jesus and this young man came from Kano. as soon as i saw them i gave them a big hug i said look um, my, my jesus friend let me tell you something you are in the image listen please i'm teaching you are in the image of christ yes are we together you have attained oneness with christ based on the doctrine of the gospel yes you are in christ one with christ yes are we together now the holy spirit represents the presence of jesus in your life yes but that you are jesus in terms of replacement you are not like that do you think that guy got born again like that not seen people pray under a tree for many weeks and by the fifth week they left that tree mad with strange revelations from beings that were not of earth pride is a dangerous thing fame has a side effect when you begin to clap for you sometimes it becomes embarrassing to step back and let jesus be seen because spotlight is sweet oh oh mine mediocre spotlight can can bless your children's children so when the spotlight is on you you plan to be there forever so that when you shift your child too will be there when you shift your grandchild too will be there but there are times when jesus says that you decrease that you will increase and many times it is embarrassing you know i go for meetings and when i see the mighty things that god is doing or sometimes when i'm teaching and the teaching grace is really on me i see the shock and the wonder on the people and i say oh dear don't be deceived you're only watching a puppet there is one behind me may i never be ashamed to let the world know that i am nothing without him this is not just some humility creed there are many proud people who say this thing i'm saying it's very true you must get to a point in your life where you are not ashamed to stand back and tell the people it is Jesus Jesus ever Jesus only he says and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men to myself let's get back to what we're discussing hunger and thirst there are times as a man of God come it will be embarrassing at your spiritual level to now join the flock to kneel down and cry for his a greater dimension you kneeling down for the flock can kneel down i'm kneeling down this guy is standing <laughs> are we together watch this a time a time can come huh when everybody is crying for more people are rolling on the ground and saying lord search my heart and as a man of god it's not any personality difference you would let them to the throne room and you are just standing there there's no need because you have become the throne room yourself you see deception is subtle so you will tell them to fast and you too you will not fast what is the need i mean whether i fast or not you see that if you want to be captured in every move of god same hunger that made you climb a tree like a monkey and held on to one branch and cried there and said god i will not come down from this tree except you bless me and god said come down i will show you what you want to see if that same hunger is not there now you can stay in a five-star hotel listen now you have all kinds of entourage do you know sometimes i look at my life today and i thank god for what god has done many times there are times that i wish that i had my life back in the days when nobody knew me fame can be destructive even to your spiritual life i can't go out freely i can't eat freely i can't be myself you see that i can't stroll out to just enjoy Koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit. 
and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. Please lift your voice. Grant understanding, O oh God. Grant understanding in the name of Jesus. understanding grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, we ask you again for understanding in the name of Jesus. Let our hearts be receptive to your word and let it transform our lives and let the proof be at work in our lives and through our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to be back home. I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity again. It was a great time in God's presence. I want us to pray tonight. And um, tonight's teaching is a call, you know. 
tonight made me understand again the power of being in the spirit and truly what can happen to a man when you are genuinely connected to the flow of what God is doing praise the Lord yes as I came up here and heard Pastor Alpha teaching and then so tonight's teaching is a call if you are not great and you have not seen anything in God you may not need tonight's teaching tonight's teaching is for people who have seen the hand of God tonight's teaching is for people who have committed themselves to press into the things of the spirit and, um, doesn't mean that if you're just starting out the teaching for you but this is God speaking to the matured ones tonight in the name of Jesus Christ come up hither part one come up hither part one unto him who sits on the throne blessing and honor To Jesus, the Lamb that was slain, glory and power, glory and power, unto Him who sits on the throne, blessings and honor. Glory and power, glory and power forever and ever, forever and ever and ever you reign forever and ever you reign forever. Come 
Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our eternity's Lord. Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our His words brings in the My wisdom, O oh heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the sea creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your Please be seated if you can and then be sensitive. Hallelujah. Please be sensitive. Especially for those of us who came from far, you didn't come to waste your time.
you see let me tell you something about a call and a ministry listen listen see, when god calls a man the anointing is not the only thing that is given you have to understand this every ministry has many standard spiritual features when god calls a man please listen there is an anointing that is upon that man by reason of his knowledge and his personal press into the things of god there is the anointing that is on the office that that man occupies spiritually there is the anointing that is on that man by reason of discerning and being part of the current move of God. they are not the same are we together and then there is the anointing that comes by reason of the dimensions that God wants to take people into based on the truths that are revealed and then at certain levels depending on the call and what office there are covenants please listen that means a vow that God made with that man that as far as it relates to this assignment I have bound myself to do certain things that has nothing to do with even the vessel you see that then there are angelic manifestations listen now there are angels that walk with believers there are angelic presence please listen as a believer he said his angels she shall put his angels charge over you there are angelic presence that work with believers but there are angels that don't follow a man they follow anointings they don't need to know who that individual is it's an office the same way they give you an office and there are cars there are pas they don't have to know you it is part of the equipping of the kingdom you see that it's very important and then there are also angelic presence that signify revelations it is not only the anointing that gives revelation the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto john his servant he said he sent it and signified it by his angel hallelujah so when you're in a meeting like this and you see things like this happen it's an interplay of many things it's not just a generic move of an anointing from an anointed man there are things happening that have nothing to do with the vessel himself there are things that are as a result of the, the health of the secret place of the vessel there are certain things that are based on the office that is being played I just wanted you to learn and to know this because many times believers just wonder look let me tell you this let me tell you this you see these things God is blessing it's not just that God is proving that a man is anointed some of these people fall in many things are happening at the same time there are deliverances there are impartations there are the, the opening spiritual vistas it's like a veil just being open to move men into dimensions this is how people grow this is how people grow it is not my desire to carry some of these graces and these possibilities and just have people watch it <clears throat> when god sends a word to jacob it is because of israel that you will also be able to carry these dimensions you see transformation is difficult when there is no reference so god finds a man that represents a possibility 
and then your spirit and your mind is able to comprehend that dimension as true and possible then you can release your faith and step into it koinonia we call it is it all right if you pray for one minute and just ask the lord say lord all the graces all the revelations pastor alpha let us know you don't have to stand just pray please pray with desperation and hunger hallelujah praise the lord please be seated revelations 4 tonight will be a mighty time it will be brief so that we'll pray we pray for grace we pray for strength revelations chapter 4 this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will show thee things which must be thereafter Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must not may be certainty, things which must be thereafter. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 how can i see by myself unless you take over i'll never know it on my own unless you take over take over Jesus, take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. How can I see by myself unless you take over? I will not hear it on my own unless you take over. Take over, take over, take over, take over. You cannot learn it on your own unless it takes over. You'll never see it by yourself. Unless it takes over. Listen. There are dimensions you can never see by willpower and study. It is given like an initiation. Until your eyes are open, you will never see it. He said, call on to me and I will answer. I will be the one to show you. If I don't show you, you cannot see it. You can study. You can pray. You can fast. But for seeing, you may have eyes, but you can never see it. There are realms that are shown. 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 It's called fellowship with the mystery. You are brought into oneness with truths and revelations. We'll never know it by ourselves. Unless it takes over. We cannot know it by ourselves. I'll never hear you on my own unless you take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. Take over. Take over. 
Please sit down. Tonight is a call to press higher. Tonight is a call to shake us away and out of spiritual complacency. Tonight is a call to show us that there is more. That regardless of that which we have seen, there is more. That's why I said, if you have not done anything serious in the spirit, this message may not be for you. This message is for someone who has healed before. It's for someone who has prophesied before. It's for someone who is at the cutting edge of the move of God. It's for someone who has tasted and seen the power and the glory of God. Tonight's message is for someone who knows what it means to be used by God. Tonight's message is someone is for someone who knows what it means to have the anointing, not guessing. Come up here, he said. Come up here to a higher realm of prophecy to a higher realm of teaching to a higher realm of visions to a higher realm of spiritual power I'm a student of revivals God has granted me the privilege to study the moves of God please listen and I have studied revivals I've listened to a few senior colleagues and fathers in the ministry talk about revivals either based on their experiences or what they were told please listen carefully and I learned this from a man of God that the current move of God always fights the next move of God that the enemy of the next move of God is the current move because many times listen carefully every move of God comes with a level of outstanding results every move of God comes with a performance in a higher dimension and usually because of the the consistency that will come with that move over a period of time it is easy for those who have mastered the strategy that makes them relevant within that move to plateau in the spirit and not believe that there can be more again now listen very carefully when the healing ministry started listen carefully great men like Alexander the way and these generals of God they moved in very strange dimensions but then a time came when the healing ministry seemed to just plateau because it looked like men had gotten to the zenith of what they believed that God could do. When the prophetic came, people rose to certain levels and it looked like those who were the highest manifestors of those gifts just stood at a realm. This is not backslide this is that you have exhausted every possibility that is within the jurisdiction of that move there is nothing you can do it as far as that dimension is concerned you have exhausted it at that level you will need revelations chapter 4 a time will come when you will find out that every dimension you need to see as written for you by God within a level you have exhausted it you've read it you've preached it you've done everything and let me tell you this listen very carefully I say it with all humility but I have seen you, you see when you start walking with God because of the extent of the downpour listen carefully of visions of revelations you are being open to new things and then especially if you have the privilege of what i call pioneer status that means that you are the among the few to introduce that dimension to a territory because of the scarceness of that revelation there will be a lot to do i mean you are so full of revelation you can preach back to back and there are messages but a time will come 
when the people within that territory all come into that experience they are baptized into it now listen very carefully remember when you were introducing it because very few people knew about that dimension there was hunger and the hunger will always draw you anything you say there will be an applause for it because very few people could enter that dimension but with time everybody will continue to press as you guide them listen carefully you will get to a point where the least has entered like the ark of noah at that point now you will find out that together the goal for that season has been met because god now used you and showed you a dimension and so for three or four years sometimes you will not even need to study anything new you are so full so full you, it's like it's a, it's like an animal that has just given birth and wanting the children to suck when that happens let me tell you what happens usually because of the joy the beauty the honor the applause that comes by reason of your being used by god to produce certain dimensions you may fall into the deception that the zenith of what you communicate is all that there can be and so what you will continue doing is recycling the same thing recycling the same thing recycling the same thing to mean that this realm that i've stayed is all there can be in god revelation starts with john the beloved do you know who john was john was not just an apostle he was called the beloved that means if you arrange all the disciples according to their permit me to use the word according to their spiritual stratification the first will not be peter the first will be john the beloved they abided these three faith peter hope james love john the greatest you see that now and john was banished in an isle called patmos for the sake of the testimony of jesus christ and while he was there he said i was in the spirit on the lord's day that, that's another discussion there because there are things you cannot see he said flesh and blood has not revealed this there are levels in the spirit where until you rise in the spirit you cannot see you cannot know so he says i was in the spirit on the lord's day and i heard first started with his hearing I heard this and that and that and then eventually he saw the church the lamb stands and then he received the dimension of revelation to the seven churches that were in Asia Minor prophetically the Catholic Church the complete church because every one of those churches represented a dimension in the body that God was adjusting commending and correcting are we together having exhausted that then he was open to another dimension of worship in heaven are we together and to think that that was all john was being told by this revelation that john at this plane that you stand now there is nothing to see again everything has been seen and every instruction has been received notice john was never shown things that will happen from that plane he only saw things that were and things that are that was it then chapter 4 comes and he says come up here and let's go to the future let me show you the things that must happen shortly and John rolls to the future there are realms that when you stand there you will see what has happened and what is happening but you may never see what God is up to you can be a Christian you can still be called I learned very early in life and in ministry that as wonderful as fame is it can be dangerous that as wonderful as revelation and leadership is let me tell you this if you ever assume a pioneer status in the spirit you have to be extra careful 
pioneers are usually the ones who hardly finish read the bible there are few pioneers that finished moses leads the people and never gets into the promised land himself are you seeing that now it's very important it's easy to follow a move that was not introduced by you it's easy to follow on yours is just to observe template and to conform to it by the spirit the nation of israel did not have to climb the mountain to experience god they just needed to look at the face of the one who already went what was in the mountain was now on the face of a man so instead of climbing up the mountain they just kept looking at moses and they would have the same experience but it was up to moses to know the next thing that god would be doing are we together now powerful as moses was you can see the extent of his trial and error they will wait behind and wait for him to go and fish out the new move then all of them will come and follow it was because of this moses was instructed to speak to the rock and in anger he struck the rock and because of that he said no 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 no. this was not my program you've corrupted it you cannot enter canaan pioneering the move of god is very dangerous many people like the honor that follows this and that to say oh we are the ones that started this dimension but you see the thing about it is that because you are at that level you will feel indebted to that level you will be emotionally connected to that move you cannot leave it to the next level are we together now yes that you were the first to be to open up a dimension of god to a territory it's like you are the first to start producing this and now when you are aware that this is no longer in use if everybody leaves it you will not want to leave it too because of that relationship that's how it is even with spiritual things there are dimensions that you can be so emotionally connected to because of the experiences that surround that dimension and when another move of god starts coming you will prefer that the move comes to meet you there but not to leave that level and to rise higher that's why i said it is dangerous to pioneer spiritual things it's a noble cause and it's a noble task but the burden on it it will only take the spirit of the living god to help you the second reason why it is dangerous or by dangerous i don't mean it is not advantageous that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that you are in a very vulnerable position the second is that because of the charisma and the ego are we together and the sense of achievement that surrounds that level the moment you and any other move that is happening within that dispensation that you don't seem to be involved in you can preach that it is error or it is satanic or it is demonic because you are used to being the starter you are not used to following you are used to starting moves understand what i'm saying you know you see that if you have not done anything in god tonight's teaching may not really bless you john was the first of his kind to introduce this dimension of the prophetic a very strange prophet the bible says of all the prophets none was as great as john so john is in the wilderness eating locust and wild honey a strange dimension of revelation when jesus comes john baptizes jesus and then he's happy that he's baptized jesus even john said i may decrease i'm not sure he understood what he was saying now eventually the disciples of john had to start leaving to join something that was a move john was never in one of jesus's crusades they didn't hang him the next day they didn't lock him the next day john was alive he was there he never saw the need because he believed that the the emotional connect and the ego of pioneering things did not allow him to go there 
notice all the people that seem to be pioneers were those who were offended with jesus the scribes and the pharisees we are the sanhedrin council what are you doing jesus all the followers were excited what is the new thing let us join if it's bread we eat if it's the mountain we climb but the scribe said not so this is not how we have been doing it including john follow me very carefully so john is hearing of the things jesus is doing and a few disciples who are loyal to him too come back look at the pain in john's heart the people he had raised i don't know what john thought he would become but his honor was already there for his assignment completed but john probably believed that he would continue to run that ministry the same way jesus was running it to like a parallel whatever it is and it seemed as though jesus did not have regard for john because we never see jesus making any mention of john go and greet john or oh, john just to tell you your boy is still here the move continues and the fame of jesus is growing john is threatened the scribes are threatened the roman government threatened everything every day was an episode of mighty things listen very carefully follow me i want to show you something powerful hmm. one day john gets himself in trouble and he's behind bars about to be beheaded and he sends in offense listen this is the current move fighting the next move go and confirm are you the one that we should be waiting for are you the messiah or is there another it was a sarcastic statement it was not a question that required an answer john was not ignorant he was a prophet and when jesus had it jesus said i know what the problem is it's a weakness in men it's a weakness in pioneers it's a weakness in those who are trusted to pioneer certain moves listen what i'm teaching you is very deep you will listen to what i said some years to come and you will cry when god sent you to a region where they do not know one tenth of the truths that god has taught you and for many years you become a celebrity and a mighty man and god begins to do mighty things in and through you and then one day you will hear and see of things that you were not involved with and you will see. this is the challenge oh, let me not go ahead of myself this is one of the major challenges with all due respect of fathers and senior colleagues in ministry because of the mighty things that god did in and through them and the dimensions that were introduced sincerely speaking not out of wickedness or whatever they were so emotionally connected to starting things that they believe that if god is ever to do anything it is impossible for them to not start it so when they hear that mighty things are happening and they don't seem to be involved they think it to their honor whereas john was not there when jesus commended him as the greatest prophet in other words as far as this move is concerned receive your crown. you have done a great job but let the program of god continue and if you are interested you will have to humble yourself and join that move provided you are not pioneering it i will show you those who got it right in the bible one of them was mary no woman as a virgin had ever gotten pregnant it was a new dimension now mary had a right to sit down and say my son jesus my this my that but when she discerned there was a new move she followed them to the upper room and waited quietly the mother of jesus among the 120 who would receive the holy ghost was it not the before some of them were born she had been relating with the holy ghost it was the holy ghost that got her pregnant and now she's coming to receive him in another dimension with humility you understand what i will teach you you will never miss any move of god if you don't get it there are moves that will leave you you will stand in shock it's not backsliding you will just say lord when did this cloud pass me
Mary got it right. John did not. John was offended. I will show you that even Jesus got it right. He knew that purpose was not just to come and remain on earth. He knew the timing. And even in advance, he began to tell them, I am not afraid of handing over. Because it is in handing over that my honor is multiplied. Listen. So Jesus is preparing the people. Watch this. And then he uses a very dangerous statement. It is expedient that I go. Ah. They said, no, you must remain here. You will be king. We eat bread. We like you. Remain. We like this kind of ministry. But he was saying, no, 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 no. I'm even coming to, I'm a bridge between the old and the new. You must be so desperate for God that the position you occupy in the things of God should not matter. You must be so desperate for the things of God like Mary. You can give birth to Jesus and still join to wait. She was not the one leading praise and worship in the upper room. If Mary comes and sits in Koinonia now, I will give her the mic. I will just give her and sit down. What does it like to carry the word of God bodily for nine months? Mary, talk to us. Let's learn. I will hand over the ministry to Mary. There was no mention of her speaking. Imagine Mary was there among the 120. So Peter is praying. Remember Jesus told us that in 10 more days, the Holy Ghost will come and Mary is watching them. You know the level of humility it takes to be a mighty mover in a dimension sustain the humility to stand back there is an obsession in men to be known there is an obsession in men to be famous it's a weakness in men please listen back to our story so john is offended and makes a sarcastic statement go and ask jesus whether he's the messiah the same said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world now said go and verify jesus we are not sure again do you know what that message would have done to the disciples they would have said if prophet john is now doubting jesus it means we have to be careful it was a sarcastic way of saying be careful with that meeting be careful with that move so when jesus had it he laughed he said go and the blind see this and that and the gospel is preached he said blessed is he that is not offended in me then the disciples were now at the center stage and one day listen carefully they heard that there were other people who were not part of their camp there, was, there were some powerful miracles happening somewhere. And the disciples said, Jesus, what is going on here? And Jesus laughed. He said, you guys want to make the mistake of John. Whoever is not against us, whoever is not against us, is for us. They were so happy. There was a time, the, the, remember the mother of James and John, she wanted to come and see him. The disciples stopped her and said, what is it? We are in a move were enjoying you see why they were angry when jesus said he was going they said well, what is all this one now so what is our own take on this you have created trouble for us and now you want to leave you are not going anywhere and jesus said no it is expedient that i go i'm going because you will now be on the center stage with the holy spirit and they refused jesus was secured enough to finish his assignment and to step back to say spirit of the living god these are the ones that represent the next move use them mightily i will still be the victory of the saints is at the mercy of their understanding the operation of the kingdom the victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of christ please listen the victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. 
the victory of the saints is dependent on their comprehending the operations of the kingdom. What I call the ordinances of heaven. God's system of making possibilities manifest. That is the reason why we continue to press in the spirit. Like spiritual archaeologists. Exploring the height, the width, the depth of the ways of God. And like archaeologists, when we find something that we think is worthy of note, we treasure it. The Bible says the kingdom is like a man who lost a pearl. Is that true? And the first thing that he did was he lit a candle and went to the room and started sweeping that room to find it. The Bible also talks about the kingdom as one who went and found a worthy jewel and sold all that he had to buy the entire plot, that entire estate. So we continue to search and the Bible says everyone that seeketh finds. If you are serious enough and desperate, the spirit of revelation will come. You will never find the secrets of the kingdom being casual. Lord, if you, if you will show me, show me, are you not God? Open my eyes, let me see. No, you will not reward anyone who approaches you with that kind of laxity. You can discern diligence. He is the rewarder of not them that seek him, them that diligently seek him. Lord, I won't let you go. Open my eyes. Show me the key. I, I, I admit that I don't know much, but Lord, open my eyes. And then the spirit of revelation comes. The angel came and told Daniel, he said, I am come to give you understanding. Daniel prayed and said, I'm not leaving this place. Lord, you must give me understanding about the times and the strategy and what to do. Twenty and one days he was there traveling. And then the angel came, granted him access to revelation. And he said, I, Daniel, understood by books. It was not just a book like opening to read. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. So, the, you must not only know what God has prepared for you. You must continue to explore the systems allocated for making it your reality. Ephesians 4 verse 18 is an anthem in this place. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Alienated. That means that your life does not become a reflection of what God has said. And the Bible says it doesn't mean he lied, but that something about your life and my life, there is a level of understanding. Understanding of what? Not just an information, the ways of God. Are we together now? Please give me this. This is a bottle of water. Look up, please, everyone. This is a bottle of water. Now, it is true that swan water gives me a guarantee that if I open this bottle, I'm going to have an enjoyable experience. Is that true? Now, you have given me the bottle, but there is a technology to open it. If you turn this thing clockwise, it will not open. Is that true? The system of opening it is to turn it anti-clockwise and keep turning it until the lid removes. As simple as this instruction is, you can die of test. Not because you are not powerful enough to lift the bottle. You can struggle turning this clockwise. And then it will look like swan water scammed you. Whereas there is a deficiency in your understanding. Now notice that you can do this and grow old doing it. And a little child will come and say, my daddy taught me. Come, let me show you. And just turn this and in two minutes, the water is there for you to take. It's a little key that opens a very big door. How many of you have lost your key and you had to stand outside? You can see the yam from the window, but you can't eat it. Why? Because a key between you and whatever it is that you prepared, someone was careless enough to make sure that key was missing. A small key that you can put in your pocket, yet that key kept you outside. As educated as you are, you are still outside. As rich as you are, have you ever lost your ATM and you stand angry as rich as you are? They just made a transfer and you are hungry. The ATM is looking at you, you are looking at it. The difference between you and your breakthrough is that ATM. 
Imagine how small things cause big trouble. Small key. ATM. That's the same way one spiritual principle you should know that may be the missing link. You've done step A, B, C, D. Step E, which is the last step, you may not know and stay there for 10 years until God by his mercy comes. For some of you, that last step is what you are getting tonight. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have done what you need to do. Hannah went at Shiloh. The Bible says Hannah prayed and prayed and prayed and they looked at her and thought that the woman was drunk and all of that and, and the prophet looked at her and said, I mean, what kind of irresponsibility is this? You are drunk in the temple? And she said, no, my Lord. She was communicating her travail. All had been set except prophecy. We don't just build with intelligence in this kingdom. We build as prophecies upon us. They build it through and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai. Are we together now? And the prophet spoke to her and she had a child supernaturally. It looks very simple. I have prayed for people and sometimes spoken over their lives quite honestly, jokingly. And I've been amazed at the way God honored it and their lives changed. Could this be the missing link? That you have done what you know. The shop is already there. The goods are already there. But for some strange reasons, the customers do not come. Your certificate is already there. The application has been submitted. But you are building with intelligence. You are building. But the prophecy that will make that building finish. The Bible did not say they started building. It says the building finished. This is a secret that worked in my own life. This is the secret that is working in this ministry. They build and they finished through the power of prophecy. I continue to explore the wonders of prophecy, especially the creative dimension of prophecy, that you can speak over someone's life. You can imagine this dear lady and a prophetic word is spoken. Let me tell you this. You know I told you something. Anything that is a blessing is not tangible. It's not physical. Whoever gives you anything that you can hold and calls it a blessing. Yes, we say that you were blessed. But the truth is you were supported. Blessings are always spiritual. Read your Bible. You don't bless men with what money can buy. You don't bless people with material things. So I can give you money. You say I bless you. It's true. But the truth is that what the blessing is not the money you are holding. The blessing is the favor that brought that money. That's what you are giving. So if you have the discernment when you go to the shop, you drop the money, not the favor. Your lack of knowledge can make you take that money with the favor on it and drop in that shop and leave. And the owner of the shop just collects your money and adds it in the midst of that and he's surprised in two months he has opened another branch he doesn't know what happened whether you know a law is there or not once you engage it it works for your favor or not for your favor i jump from here by mistake i will fall gravity will not say no i'm aware he's joking it's an example no there are no examples with laws You don't swallow food and then the food says, I won't reach your stomach. I know you are, I will, I will come out when you, no. Laws don't care whether you are joking or you are serious. They work. Bishop Oyedeko would always say that God told him while he was, I think in the US, he said, get down and make my people rich. Yet, he doesn't necessarily organize business seminars or symposiums. You would think that, okay, he should be teaching people the dynamics of finances and all of that. And then this man will say, okay, come with everything you are building. My job is to keep speaking while you build. And you find out the buildings always get completed. When you build while a voice is speaking, it must finish. The same way a voice was speaking while God was building. God himself used that principle in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, 
and God said, before he would do anything, he would say, let us do it. And then he would do it. When there is your formula for building, alongside the prophetic, that building must finish, no matter what it is. Are we together now? Yes. Many of us build. We get the raw materials. And then we say, based on this and that and that, I will build this great destiny. In the name of Jesus, we, we can be well-meaning. And then we start the building and find out that at a point we are pegged to our surprise. And you can't trace, based on your architecture, nothing is wrong. That building is supposed to finish, yet it does not finish. Because there are laws in this kingdom. We build and prosper through the prophesyings. Not just through intentions. It was Bishop Oyedepo who would share his experience with Archbishop Benson Idahosa that he carried a seed, you know, he came and he was going to run an errand for him. And he ran the errand very fast and came and waited for him and he looked at him and wanted to reward him. I hope I'm right with the story. And then he opened, you know, a compartment full of money. And then Bishop Oedeko would not take and say, no, I don't want this. And he looked at him and blessed him. And he says, from today, God has given you the grace of on time. That before a need arises, the supplies are there. Now, that's how to bless. So he can now go and build because there is prophecy. Listen, unbelievers know this. They prepare their work together. Then they now go to dark powers and say, I'm ready to build. I'm ready for election. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for the scholarship. I'm ready to build the business. I have done everything. I just returned from Harvard with my certificate. But I know that a body without a spirit is dead. Therefore, let there be prophecy on it. They carry that thing and they finish what they have started. God is a finisher. That means that when the hand of Zerubbabel begins something, that hand should complete it. But the systems that make men complete the things that they want to do, that system is largely not understood. And tonight we are going to use one of those keys. The power, not of words. There is a difference between words and prophecy. Words are utterances. They are powerful on their own. But prophetic words are utterances that are directed and backed up by an, an anointing and God's integrity. You don't prophesy, you don't speak as you are commanded. You speak, you are a human being. How are you? But you don't prophesy just the way you want. You are commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. We had a very strange miracle that happened in Kano. Those of you who followed, it was a very strange miracle. I don't know whether they were Christians or not. Brought in somebody who was mad. Those of you who were there or followed. And that gentleman was, they didn't even know he was in a church. And the one that touched me most was someone, three days had been in labor. That baby would not come out. And while I was speaking, the gentleman got angry and called the phone and said they should give it to her and put it on the loudspeaker. As I was speaking, there and then, the woman gave birth right there in the hospital. Someone that they were saying after, maybe if they would induce or do something or maybe a CS or so, and the baby just came out like that. When the systems of the kingdom are put in place, you will wonder at the power of God. The potentials of God are short-circuited when his systems are not understood. So, we, he continues to be misrepresented in our lives, which is not a product of his inability, but the product of our not understanding his ways. Are we blessed now? There may be a man of God here. You have done all, but that one thing you need is the power of prophecy. Jesus went to the temple from age 12. He had been preparing and doing everything. But at age 30, he went to look for a prophet. 
and John said, I won't baptize you. Jesus said, you are joking. Suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. It's a formula. And when he came out of the water, the heavens opened. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven for 30 years until prophecy opened his heavens. So the fact that you are carrying the word, it can be under a closed heaven. Prophecy opens it up. The word for breakthrough, the word for speed can be under a closed heaven. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, my heavens must open tonight. of the Jews build it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. They went forward through the prophesying. They got jobs through the prophesying. They carried their miracle children through the prophesying. They received mantles and graces through the prophesying. Their lives turn around through the prophesying. Shalakata prakato serekaria. Make sure you are praying. spirit come hold this for me no Ejimi, don't worry let him do it hold the tray not the water put it down and hold the tray this is how words are in the realm of the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words carry things words are trays in the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words contain mysteries so the word can carry a cause. The word comes to you and returns back, but the cause remains. The word was a messenger. The word can carry a blessing. You can receive the word. It returns back because words are living, so they move. When they come, they go back. Words don't remain. It is what they carry that remains. So shall my word be that goeth forth. I send it as a messenger when it delivers it returns back and says I have done what you sent me to do then he sends the word on Aaron again listen words are not just talkings because when Isaac listen blessed Jacob Esau came and said don't you have any other thing he said it is finished was the talking finished so words are not just speaking you are a boy Yes, you said that is word in English, but in the realm of the spirit, words are the factors in speakings that contain spirit and life. So I can sit down here and put favor on a word and send it as a messenger. The courier system is called prophecy. So you can the moment you see words coming to you, you start rejoicing because you know that the words is like it's like you know, I I I do a lot of conga and jumia, and sometimes they just call me and say, We are within vicinity, can we come? And the moment I hear the sound of their van, do I need the van? Do I need the package? The package that comes will say conga. I quickly open the package, then there is another package. I open everything till I get what I'm looking for. That thing, the van will return back because it needs to come back again. But what it brought it is what stays with me. Many of us waste words because we think it is in the speaking. Be blessed. That thing is not the English. It's just a word prophesied to you. It transported something spiritual. So when it enters your ears, 
the thing that was attached with it drops in your spirit and then the be blessed English now just goes out so you know that words were spoken and then you can't even remember everything that was said in the service but then you go back and find out your life starts changing someone who has no business blessing you and you say Lord when did that happen that is why deafness is a terrible thing are we together now that you cannot hear the word cannot come the entrance of thy word so listen to me understand how this works come stand here this gentleman just stand there this is favor this is what this guy wants this is favor this is what he desperately needs and God carries that favor and puts it upon words and the messenger is not a prophet the messenger is the prophecy the prophecy is what brings it to him as many as received him meaning you can reject him the word can come but you will say it's not trade that i want i need this and then the word returns back with the gift and say i was rejected when i got to that address then when you pray again god will say by my mercy let's try again and the word comes and you don't receive it and it goes back he sent forth his word when they received the word the word he led them the word delivered them so he sent forth healing he sent forth deliverance but they were carried in a tray called words this is the mystery men receive that's why when you see people talk about the word word most people even those who teach it they don't even really fully understand what they are saying they think it is speakings that gives you intelligence no words convey information they convey thoughts but that's not the only thing they do they are mighty systems of impartation words i can be sitting here right now and yet i'm ministering to someone outside because the minister is really not me the minister is the word are you getting what i'm saying now that means no matter where you are the moment the words begin to come and the way god designed it is that it is your faith that determines what is put on that word so i can sit down and say lord send me a word for my breakthrough and god will say that's it everyone that ask it receive it and he puts that word and you will hear me speak casually in the name of jesus let doors be open and you say that's it you did not see that that word was carrying something you receive that word the miracle in it will start working you don't receive the healing you receive the word the healing was designed to work when the word is received when you enter a city jesus was teaching find out whether they be a house of peace when you find it there he says let what is on you rest there when you don't find anybody that receives you let your peace rest with you meaning there are things that rest return are received are rejected these are some of the things that govern the results that we get look at the wonderful that adorable lady that shared her testimony from lagos words transcend time and distance and she can receive that word for her brother or friend and hiv of 24 years when the word gets to hiv hiv is a spirit so it knows it's not words that he seen remember when men saw the word they saw a man when demons saw the word they saw the life-giving power of god they looked at jesus and ah you see not this guy this this 33 year old body is fooling people this is not 33 year old this is the ancient of days hidden in a 33 year old body but men were looking at the son of mary but principalities and powers knew what they were seeing when a prophet saw jesus he said behold the lamb you will think it's an insult you are calling me an animal he was speaking prophetically the same way you can look at gideon and say oh mighty man of valor and Gideon says where are you seeing this because the word is also a mirror the same way native doctors use water 
and look at your destiny you can use the word and look there's a beautiful picture most of you have seen of a young cat that looks at itself through a mirror and sees a lion very powerful so you can come here weak and then God comes to you and says no you are not supposed to be that and he says this is your image and he says Lord I agree I see it the word is received the power as many as received that word he gave them power that came with the word to become power to become as many as received him even to them that called upon his name he gave them power to become power to become an apostle power to become a prophet power to become prosperous power to rise and shake whatever it is that brought you down power to silence the voices of darkness thank you this is how fathers blessed throughout the bible all the sons knew that they didn't they didn't wish for any inheritance of goat or sheep they gave them those things but they knew it was temporal but the moment they received something on their head the fathers told them bye bye and never cared to find out are you doing well because they knew that what they sent them with was designed to make sure that all things work together let me tell you if someone counts come sam come this lady if this is a husband and wife and you greet all of them and give them plates Huh? or you give them cup or a set of tea you gave them gifts not a blessing now there's nothing wrong with that they will carry those things and somebody can steal it but when you speak over their lives those words remain and start working so this guy was supposed to fail remember when he gets to the place where he wants to fail that word is a spiritual buffer it starts doing something to him to make sure he goes away from trouble there was supposed to be trouble ordinarily he would have been a victim but something that was on him will move him the lord knows how to deliver the righteous there is something that you can receive and where there is a job that is your own you find yourself moving there you are not moving something is moving you there this is what creates favor in life it looks like a repetition of coincidences everything good that is about to happen you call them they say i just heard about it must you hear about everything good then th that grace makes sure that nothing good passes you without you not hearing it the same way someone can put something negative on this lady and she will come someone wants to marry her and what is on her will make sure that guy hates her and everything destroyed. I say, what is this? Is it that I'm not beautiful? It's not about beauty. It's about what happened. That's why the Bible says God can deliver men from six things. Yes, seven things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. That men can use words to program something on you and just say, go. Now, you will, because you didn't feel anything, that word remains. This gentleman is standing here. He's supposed to marry her, but something on her is fighting him. You are supposed to get a job. The person promised heaven and said, and just a signature to get that job. But something on you, make sure that your paper is taken away from the list. This is what we came to correct tonight. That by the power of prophecy, that, that something can come upon your life and you will walk out of here and see things that should not happen someone can look at you and say man of god you are not supposed to move at this spiritual rate when did you get born again and you say it's not my fault it's what is on me something on me draws the right people and you find out listen listen that's why you find out there are churches you always find the right keyboardist the right drummer they are looking for pastors you find the right pastors and it's not as if the people are eloquent enough to look for them there is a spirit somebody enters that town and says i want to come and fellowship with koinonia they didn't just come the day you are announcing your book that's the day the richest helper in your life is forced to come to the city he didn't just come something on you controls everything around you so the key is not to try to change things 
buy a new shoe with a negative word on your head that negative word will tear that shoe and return you back to the way they prophesied on your life please take serious what i'm saying many arrogant believers will not hear this and will continue to move in circles and circles of shame and regret in this kingdom we build but we prosper and finish what we are building through the power of prophecy hallelujah you have applied for the job you have submitted it there's nothing you can do about it again you don't even have access to the office you can't call the director why don't you send words let words enter that office like an arm robber and search where is her file and sit on it listen remember you can't get to the office but there's something that can get there i'm not motivating you believe me and that word will rest on your employment letter and the, the man is pushing everything and he just picks yours now remember the man may not be born again so he can't explain what is happening because he operates in the three-dimensional realm the word and the miracle of favor in it is speaking to his spirit man and because he's empowered by god's integrity he must hear it and he looks and says who is this what tribe ah i the slot is for five people from the north who is this yoruba girl now who knows maybe she doesn't have a father or mother and they take this and you get a job that you sit down and say ah, ah, what is this again if you don't believe this then i welcome you to the realm of hardship and suffering where you can almost lose your salvation because of the squalor that comes upon arrogant people you see people that you think don't deserve it but they are childlike enough to allow words go before them are we together in the bible every time fathers were releasing their children they would tell them place your hand upon my thigh and they would place their hand and speak speak over their lives and say i've finished go whoever comes again they say the word has finished I can talk to you i can counsel you but if it's that thing you are looking for it has finished do you believe what i'm sharing with you because we are going to be very very fast tonight and i want you to believe the moment words are coming don't just hear them as amplified sounds from a public address system they are spirits you have to discern it they are spirits oh may god lift you it's not just by shouting amen may god lift you so the word is coming with a grace for lifting you receive the word but you are searching where is the grace and that grace is on you you go expecting to be lifted it's as if life owes you lifting because there is a word there and you will be surprised to see the way things just open are you ready to pray find a corner in the next two three minutes I like you to declare, declare and pray. Please pray, take it seriously. The things that must shift in your life, the things that must change in your life is called a miracle service. Especially for those of you who came from far. Please believe. Lord, let something come upon my life tonight that will give me speed. Come upon my life that will give me joy, that will bring me breakthrough. I tap into this mystery that is in the book of Ezra. I'm willing to build, but Lord, I know that I will prosper through the prophesyings. Prosper through the prophesyings. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved.
worship the entrance of thy word give it light the entrance of thy word give it favor the entrance of thy word give it restoration media platforms and a system was programmed that when you forget your password there are times that you want to access your mail or whatever page and for some reason you can forget your password there is a provision there it will ask you have you forgotten your password and then it will try to do one two three things and give you another opportunity to put a new password or remind you of the password you forgot. If in the physical recovery is possible, then how, how much more the realm of the spirit? Someone tonight is going to insist. You, it left you to a point that you are not even thinking of it again. And God is saying, no, Lazarus must come back home. You must find it again. Before I begin to pray, 
open your mouth whatever left me that should not leave me you must return back opportunities dimensions in the spirit cooperate with me I want us to finish very fast and so tonight I may not really have time to prophesy and speak to people one by one because it would take time but I want you to please believe are we together words can bring things and words can carry things out of your life was it not because Jonah entered a boat innocent people on a voyage a man carried something entered their boat they lost properties lost they were about to lose their life and they said what is the cause of this and jonah said i'm the one the solution he didn't say counsel me throw me out of that boat there are things that you don't patch you don't manage they must be thrown out completely there are pronouncements you must carry them and say i saw you destroy my father my mother you are going out of my by the spirit of might in the name of jesus that you will do a quick walk in this place i pray oh god that within the next few minutes visit your people let it not just be a ritual but lord that you will visit them in the name of jesus christ you will visit them I'm going to count five just now. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't do anything. Once I count five, I'm seeing a fire of deliverance. We're going to start with it because people must be set free. I truly believe in emancipation. And the Lord is giving me an instruction to just count five. And then I begin to speak. One, two. The things of the spirit are very strange. I want you to bring them out. Three. My God, I sense such fire. I'm already even seeing four get ready now five let that fire right now in the name of jesus everything in your life that must leave i declare right now by the power that is in the name of jesus the son of the living god by the fire of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ bring them out outside everywhere overflow one two the roadside online I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost the word of God brings every evil from out of their hiding place I declare and I prophesy I send the word like a messenger of judgment into every family into every destiny and I declare that everything that needs to be judged will not escape the fire of God tonight therefore I declare judgment judgment upon the hand of the wicked in the mighty name of jesus christ judgment upon the wicked judgment upon the wicked hallelujah the spirit i'm taking charge over now are the forces responsible for closed doors listen over life if you have seen that you stand and a door refuses to open no matter what you do something is about to happen to you now lift your hands father i declare anyone here who is under the yoke of a spirit that causes closed doors now you are ready to shout at the count of three 
in the name of Jesus I judge that spirit one two three shout Jesus I command those spirits I challenge those forces I send the word doors open ordinances that close doors let doors be open now over lives over destinies be open now outside be open inside be open in the name of Jesus hallelujah the Lord is showing me people and I'm seeing chains on their feet and I'm seeing literal fire like rising from the ground of this auditorium and I'm going to speak now when I speak those chains that I see you will be amazed at the testimonies that will rise from this month's miracle service Lord Jesus I declare anyone being tied down by any chain I declare right now let the fire of the it could be chains that are territorial it could be chains of wickedness I command a release right now in the name of Jesus I command a release right now I command a release right now a release right now a release right now What I'm seeing now for a long time and then I think last miracle service or so I saw it again it's, it's a sign and wonder and I don't know why God does it I'm seeing a map before me now and I'm seeing Kogi state Kogi state you know what happens when God shows me this that means people from that state the power of God begins to touch them right now in the name of Jesus I declare the fire of God is going to that state and I declare freedom right now there are ordinances and yokes within that region. When you are from that region, the power of God meets you. I decree and declare now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete freedom, complete freedom. The power of God is still coming, Kogi State. I decree and I declare, if there is anything that is not the planting of the Lord in any of those regions, I uproot it now by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out, please. Overflow one, lift your hands. I stretch my hands right now. I'm seeing a very strange fire. People will start running from overflow one. I'm, I've not prayed that prayer, but I'm seeing a grace for speed. This is the spirit of delay being broken. Overflow one, in the name of Jesus, I declare, may that grace come upon people right now. They will begin to run by the spirit. Run by the spirit. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But the Lord is asking me to stand here. I'm standing here and I'm seeing right here. Just right here. I'm seeing there is something the angel of the Lord is doing. Right here. I decree and I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus let the yokes of darkness the ordinances of witchcraft let it be broken right now let it be broken right now sick people now but I'm seeing 
the Lord is telling me he's taking away objects from people's bodies physical objects movements around the body that you feel movements around the body right now I declare anyone who has those experiences I stretch my hands now I stretch my hands now the Lord is saying I should stand here in the name of Jesus any movement in the name of Jesus movements in the body I cause it now in the name of Jesus everything that is not of God in anyone's body around here I take it out of your body now I take it out of your body now look at me my dear this lady lift your hands I stretch my hands now I saw fire coming on you right now I declare that devil must let you go I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost now be set free in the name of Jesus all those in front I declare the count of three the spirits that manifested must let you go I speak as one sent from God at the count of three let them go one two three go 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 out of their lives and out of their destinies in the name of Jesus Christ trusting God for jobs you are trusting God for a job just keep your hands lifted I just saw something that looked like a parcel we are going to pray for the sick but I'm stretching my hands fire is leaving my hands I'm seeing from the realm of the spirit and it's come not everybody but in the name of Jesus Lord those that are designed to receive miracle jobs through these impartations where are they oh God I send your anointing kalato sebahasha embrekete kete kotele kete konasa akatos kale karonsa sianakata in the name of Jesus let there be miracle jobs to those people by the spirit in the name of Jesus who is yakubu oh my god now i want us to pray for the sick who is yakubu Yakubu, where are you? Oh, it's even you, protocol, come. Your season of lifting has come. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you. Where's your wife? Wife, come. Look at, oh, what a wonderful wife. Again, her husband. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak and I prophesy to you here. Look at what is happening to them. I declare by the anointing of the Spirit, the month of November, two of you will come to testify here. The God of heaven is turning your lives around one finances two i'm seeing you climbing ladders in the spirit and i decree and declare over you it must be so right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ if i start speaking one by one time sir please come this man come sir god is about to change your life come Where are you come? Please stand up, please stand up, sir. Where are you coming from? From Sabongari. I want to pray for you. Where do you stay? Sir, I don't mean to scare you. Are we together now? I'm not a prophet of doom. But this your coming here now has saved you from dying. You have been having dreams. You have been having dreams dreams yes. that's what i'm saying dead people yes, you see dead them. people in dreams i have seen them this is what i'm saying if you did not come here i saw that you were somewhere around pz and a car just came you're on a bike and that car just hit you and just killed you that's how they left you on the ground there but in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the spirit behind why am i saying god is saving families from the spirit of death i just saw like an arrow right now any family here any family I'm seeing like arrows of death I reverse them you will know because I'm praying for you I declare now now any family that the devil has found that there must be an obituary I command in the name of Jesus Christ freedom death leave the God's people in the name of Jesus 
Lord of wonders will do wonders in their lives. I agree with them very quickly. Please don't doubt what you are doing. Those who are standing, trust God to touch you. Trust God to return with a testimony. Who have come with all kinds of situations. Arise, O oh God, in your power. Wrought wonders. In the name of Jesus. Let your people return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Quickly, please. Please. Um, except the people speak to you and I would, please let there be minimal um, personal speakings because we have to rush. As hands are laid on you, please believe. Don't say it's not apostle that is laying hands on me. It's a corporate grace that is working here. And for those of us who are seated, the worship team will be ministering. But don't just sit and just be looking. I'd like you to believe because immediately after this, I'll be doing the prophecy and the impartation and we'll be trusting God to turn things around. If you have your prayer request while the service is going on, whether you are here or just wave it and then there will be people PR protocol. Please join the people so that we'll make it fast. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you.
Say in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree and declare that every delayed promise, say it again, that every delayed promise must manifest before the end of this month. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, delayed promise. Make sure you are praying. Every delayed promise in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hold on. Medically speaking, after nine months, when they give a woman EDD, sometimes it can seem to cross with a few weeks. The doctors give plus or minus. Is that true? And by the time it exceeds, it becomes an issue of concern. And then the doctors have a system where they can induce the woman or at least go through CS. It doesn't matter how that blessing must arrive. Lord, I declare it is time for me to walk in it. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Every prepared blessing that the prophetic word of God has made available, I step into it. Jesus, I receive the grace to discern my miracle. Because you see, sometimes a miracle may not come in a way that you see it. Are we together now? Who would have known that it was the little jar in the house of the woman who was already owing that will save her? Sometimes your miracle is there. But God must open your eyes. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive discernment. Cause my eyes to be open. To see my miracle in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cause my eyes to be open.
name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point. I'd like you to declare. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, bring speed to my destiny. Let me tell you something. Except you are not living on planet earth. There are times that God will desire for certain things to happen in your life. But for whatever reason, those seasons can pass and you will not step into it. Now, God must give you speed to be able to catch up with what matches the pace of your life. Pray this prayer and you will watch God answer. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, for my years of delay, I receive supernatural speed in every area of my life. Open your mouth and mention every area of your life. Lord, I would have gotten admission 10 years ago, but for some reason I was delayed. Give me speed. Give me speed. this is not a ritual this is not a formality there is an anointing there is a grace there is a covenant that makes for this request to be answered prayers Paul said for this cause I Paul bow my knees I bow my knees, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. Visit impossible situations, O oh God of heaven. In the name.
name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have brought strange miracles to men and women by reason of this mystery. Father, I declare there are people here who have written things that only you can solve. Things that if we see with the eyes of men, it will even challenge our faith. My God, surprise everyone. Please agree with me. Surprise everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let every need represented here, whatever that need is, I agree right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let every need here be turned into a miracle. Any human agent that has vowed that this request will not be answered, may the fire of judgment come upon them now. Remember, all blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men away from you. All blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men. So whether it's from God or from Satan, men play a role. I say it again in the name of Jesus. Everybody who the devil wants to use to play a negative role, to sabotage what God has answered, what he has done in your life, let the fire of judgment rest upon them now. Let me give you an instance. If God destines that you are the one who will lift your family out and be great, and Satan programs a man with a gun to kill you, you know what that man has done? He didn't just kill you. He stopped the word of God from coming to pass in your family. I'm saying it again. Any human agent, if you don't like it, just say amen to the one you believe. But any human agent that stands the way of prophecy over your life, may the word of God rest like fire upon them. When a man is supposed to give you a job and gets angry because something happened and packs all the employment letter and shelves it and they forget about it for the next two years. The guy to help Joseph came out and forgot him for two years. It was after two years by the mercy of God he said, I remember my wrong. So he acknowledged it was wrong. I pray whoever has forgotten you that must remember you, may they remember their wrong. And may they correct it. Every anointing and every grace that God preordained that should be resting upon your life, your ministry right now, and by some activity of darkness, it has not yet touched your head. I declare, may that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. Remember what I taught you about words. Never forget, words are trades. God is serving you something. He's only using words. Are you ready to receive the prayer of favor again? Don't say you have said it before. Remember that they build and they prosper through the prophesying. Not once. Jesus, your Jesus, touched the eyes of a man. And he said, what do you see? This is the word touching a man's eyes. He said, I'm seeing, but I see men like trees. Jesus said, nonsense. He touched his eyes again. And he saw men clearly. If he, if he was left like that, listen, we want, to, we want to destroy the spirit 
that are bought complete miracles. So the miracle starts in your life but never finishes. Have you seen people like that? It starts in your life but never finishes. In the name of Jesus. Because according to scripture, if the hand of Zerubbabel starts a thing, that hand should complete it. I'm praying right now. Every miracle that has started, when Elijah saw the rain like the fist of a man's hand, it didn't stop as a fist. It became an abundance of rain. Therefore, I declare, what you have seen like the fist of a man's hand, it must come to completion in your life. It must come to completion in your life. So you get a job, but they say you need an interview. You pass stage one. You pass stage two. They even give you small pocket money and you are happy. It's almost as if you are employed. Then when the final list comes out, your name is not there. A lady sent me a text crying that a gentleman came and paid her dowry and ran away. What did he do? He paid her dowry and ran away. It's better that that lady were never married than the one that you gathered people, they paid your dowry, then he ran away. Let me say it again. The Bible says, he that has begun this good work, except it's not a good work, what my God has started in your life, in the name of Jesus, it must come to end. Let me pray for your family that in the name of Jesus, whatever has brought pain to your family, whatever has brought shame, whatever has brought distress, right now I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. We come from different families and we know the various challenges that we left from our different families. Therefore I prophesy to you right now in the name of Jesus that every challenge you left from your family, let that challenge be turned into a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Now, let me prophesy a very serious prophecy for you. Everything you saw from January that God vowed with his integrity in the place of your retreat, he showed you things. You know it's not guesswork. You know that God told you certain things but you have not seen it come to pass. I release my faith with you and I command October to deliver the result for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone who is in ministry here, I want to pray for you. Whether it's an evangelical ministry, you are a missionary, you are into a prophetic ministry, whatever is making it to not work or whether it's a prayer group a fellowship i stretch my hands i strengthen your hands in the spirit fresh fire upon the work that you do in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone in anger who made any pronouncement over your life it could even be your biological parents I stand here by the privilege of the prophetic and the apostolic and I declare that that statement is erased from your life. Those in business, I pray for you. I decree and declare the spirit that brings fruitless labor you labor so much and yet nothing comes to fruition. I curse that spirit from its root now. Let me pray again in the name of Jesus that everyone trusting God for a miracle job. I don't care how long you have waited. In the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, I speak to you. May the Lord surprise you. The Lord is showing me a medical doctor 
that an appointment is coming from, from Abuja, one of the hospitals in Abuja. As I just prayed this prayer, I saw it in the spirit. We establish it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone, nobody has ever truly applied for a visa and gotten it in your family. It doesn't matter how many times they apply. And the reasons are legitimate. I speak by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May the favor of God open the doors of nations for you. Hallelujah. One way the spirit of poverty, listen, eats up resources from people is through the mystery of terminal illness. Illness that your money must finish before the person now dies. Are we together now? It's a wicked spirit. Because you can't sit down and watch your loved one in pain. You will liquidate everything you have to help them. When the entire family is drained, then the person just goes. I declare, if there is anyone with any terminal illness that is sapping resources from your family, may the healing power of Jesus touch them and quicken them now. Favor is a spirit. I stretch my hands and I declare in the name of Jesus from today, carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. In one minute, wherever you are, open your mouth and let's pray for Kaduna State. Blood-sucking spirits will curse you. Pray! We declare peace upon our borders. Pray for the families that have been bereaved. Lord, by your mercy, let there be peace. We prophesy peace in Zaria, peace in Kaduna State, peace in Jos. Peace in Adamawa, peace in Benue, in the name of Jesus. The rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. We fortify our spiritual borders. Please pray. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Kaduna, hear the word of the Lord. Let there be peace. We pray for the spirit of love. We pray for the spirit of love, the spirit of unity. Christians, Muslims, free thinkers, that together in the name of Jesus, there will be a bond of peace. Hallelujah. Number one, make sure you do not use the social media platform to your detriment and the detriment of the church. Are we together? passing nasty comments and things that may not make sense that can aggravate um, crisis and all of this we are matured believers we must have the wisdom to be able to respond this is not about Christians it's not truly about Muslims it's about the devil finding agents masquerading through religion and politics to destroy the program of God so the issue is not just about Christians it's not just about Muslims and all of this my perspective as a person has always been to demonstrate love because we believe no human being regardless of religion acts wicked on his own accord they are motivated by dark spirits that manipulate their minds so when we challenge the bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal so we speak and settle realities in the realm of the spirit these are the spirits that can use anybody if brothers kill brothers, then anybody can kill anybody when the spirits are at work. Our responsibility as believers is to challenge the controlling powers that manipulate the destinies of people. Number two, please, there are families that have lost loved ones. If there is any way you can support them, whether in prayer or through whatever means, it is a very welcome development. Are we together? And then finally, I would encourage us, we have prayed, but we are responsible people. It is wise to be vigilant, especially for those who live within the Kaduna metropolis and then Jos, Adamawa, Benue. We will continue to pray 
and speak peace it says give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem so we will continue to pray but it's wise to be vigilant because there are certain kinds of death the bible calls the death of a fool are we together now it is wise that we are vigilant by god's grace whatever information we have a brilliant intelligence system that feeds me with whatever information and if there is any cause for concern or any action there is an intelligence system to reach everyone avoid spreading rumors and avoid moving around your job is just to continue to pray for believers that have for any reason gone to be with the lord it shouldn't start creating a subject of debate where we argue and do a lot of childish things when believers go to be with the Lord, let's stand by the families and encourage them and speak words of hope. While we continue speaking life, let me balance this. Because if, if God forbid, but if I die today, it does not cancel the fact that long life is the will of God for the saints. So on one side, while you weep and mourn for what has happened, the word of God is bigger than any man. I'm saying this because sometimes Satan uses these things to discourage the body of Christ. Let God be true and every man, including the best of us, be a liar. So make sure you continue to stand on your convictions. Be sympathetic to people. Don't be emotionless about the things that happen to people. But maintain your stand and your conviction about the integrity of what God has said should be. Are we together now? I speak to everyone here. The covenant of protection. You have to know the blessings that accrue to this ministry that you are part of. I declare in the name of Jesus, the grace that has protected us, the grace that has protected this, this ministry, may that grace speak in your life. I forbid the earth, not the sword, from receiving your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you. Like we prophesied, October is not done yet. Between now and 31st of October, in the name of Jesus, the balance of what must enter your hand, may the God of heaven arise and put it in your hand. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There was a brief charge today. And while you were speaking, the Spirit of the Lord was convicting me that I need Jesus. Or number two, that I need to make my ways right with Jesus. I love Jesus, but I feel a need for a restoration. Please, wherever you are, we have just a minute or two for you. I'd like you to boldly leave your seat. Please, every time we make an altar call like this, give the people a chance to come. Don't intimidate them. Let there be no movings and let the people come. Wherever you are, you are saying, Apostle, if you will lead me to Jesus, I will gladly hand over my life to him. Wherever you are, I want to pray for you. Please leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here. God bless you for your boldness. People are coming. Outside, are you coming? Make your way quickly. God bless you. Make your way. Jesus is talking to someone. This is a time when you should hearken to his voice. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you're coming from outside, please run. You will need to double up. Run quickly. I want to pray now. Let's celebrate those who are coming. Let's encourage them. No man comes to Jesus except you are drawn by him. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. There are still a few people. We give you a few seconds. Run quickly. Join them. Those online, you're connecting online, be ready to pray the prayer with us. There's no time, there's no distance. God bless you, keep coming. I see a gentleman coming, I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I salute all of you who are standing, whether giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or rededicating your life. May the Lord bless you. Lift your right hand quickly, those joining, join quickly. I like you to say this sincerely from your heart. Jesus is here and he loves you. Always ready to give you a new beginning. The Bible says to him that is joined to the living there is hope. Say after me Lord Jesus. Look at this my adorable children. Make sure you say Lord Jesus too dear ones. Say Lord Jesus. 
I believe in you that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I accept that I cannot help myself and I ask that you be my Savior, you be my Lord, you be my King. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he was raised from the dead for my justification. Right now, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I am saved. I'm a child of God. Amen. Jesus, thank you for these ones. You have drawn them by your spirit. Let the grace that saves, let the grace that keep rest upon these ones. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will go from glory to glory. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the door is open for you to a new and a better life. In the name of Jesus, from today, you move forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I salute you once again. Thank you for this very bold decision. Please follow the lady smiling at you with her hands waving at you. Just follow her and there will be a group of people to just address you. Please cooperate with them very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.